What is going on? So what we're going to be doing every single year is kind of wrap up the end of the year and then move into the following year with a couple of bold predictions. Some of these are bold predictions. Some of these are not. These are these are really it's not that they're bold. It's more about condensing all of the information, all the news, all the things that are happening, all the market reports. And listen, I go to open houses all the time. I have appointments all the time. I talk to owners all the time. So I have a good pulse of the buyers. I have a good pulse of the sellers. So on top of all the market updates, which are essentially just numbers, you know, which, which is good. But the thing is they're lagging indicators. So you have a leading indicator and then you have a lagging indicator. So a lagging indicator is this is what happened in the month that you just came out of. So if it's December, what happened in November? Or you're in Q1 of, of one year, they say what happened in Q4 of last year. So that's a, that's a lagging indicator. A leading indicator is how many people are coming to my open houses? How many people are inquiring about these properties? What are they saying when they come in? What Are they actually moving forward? If they like the property, what's their emotional response? What are their feelings? What are their offers like? That's a leading indicator because that's a lie. That, that's right now. This is actually taking both and saying, these are the top six things that I think 2019, going into 2020, because that's, that's essentially how it works in real estate is definitely far along, in other words, into the future, what it's going to be like. So the first one is the spring of 2019 will be better than the fall of 2019. In other words, typically the spring is really good and it sets you up for the fall. This is the first year that the opposite is true. So the spring was incredible this year, 2018. The fall was brutal. Just to give you some numbers from our market report, 2000 homes entered the market, only 889 closings were recorded. So when you're when you're talking about a reduction of less than 50% actually being recorded as opposed to coming onto the market, Economics 101, supply and demand, the pricing is gonna go down. There's a lot of supply, there's less demand, pricing is gonna go down. I think th three things are gonna happen in from now until the spring, from obviously 2018 going into 2019, there's three only three things that can happen. If your home is not selling, number one is you rent it out if you could and if you want to. Number two is you drop the price to where the market is. And the third is you take it off the market. I'm talking to a lot of sellers right now and they say, Which, when should we put it on? What's the price we should put it on? I say, first of all, I can't give you a price right now and this is the first time I'm, I'm gonna give you a range and then the second thing I'm going to say with that is it really depends on what happens with the inventory that doesn't sell from now until March of next year. I'm thinking and I'm feeling that the spring is going to be really good. Then we're going to go into election season, which is definitely going to be a year, you know, obviously primaries and things like that. And then people get hesitant. Who's going to be the president? What are we going to do? Blah, blah, blah. I already went through that in 2016. I know that there's a lot of uncertainty and obviously pricing was escalating and then it stalled and then it escalated again in 2019 going to 2020. I don't think that pricing is going to stall. I think it's going to just kind of deteriorate. Second thing, there's a couple of things that are happening. Number one is there's less transactions. Okay. We used to be at right around maybe 12,000 transactions a year in the bullish of bull markets. Then it went down to 11 and now it's hovering right around 10,000 transactions. So that means there's way more agents and there's way less transactions. So you have, there's less transactions. And there, so obviously the, the topic of this is that the offices of the largest brokerages, you'll see them start closing. They're not going to be massive and you're, they're not going to be public because obviously the brokerages, the largest brokerages, they have egos and things like that. But I understand their overhead. Their overhead is massive. They have a lot of people on staff in their marketing department, their IT department on obviously support staff. And then they have their rental spaces, which are all bottom floor retail spaces, ground floor retail spaces. Some of them on the hottest parts in the hottest parts of the city, Soho, Greenwich Village on Broadway, Upper West Side, downtown. Those are expensive retail spaces. And that's a consistent fixed overhead. The variable costs are how much business is actually coming in. So the offices of the largest brokerages will, will close. And this is why, as I was saying before, is number one, the amount of transactions is down. Number two is the amount of commission is also down because when there's less transactions, there's more competition. It's the same thing with anything. Is it if there's more car companies, guess what happens? GM has to actually close a big plant in Detroit and they say, well, we're not getting the demand that we should. Moving on is the massive, which actually kind of correlates with number three is massive numbers of brokers will leave the industry and 
the numbers entering will dwindle well, I actually wrote, will dramatically decrease. The amount of agents, you know, there's so many numbers that are being thrown at, you know, some people, there's, there's 35,000 agents, there's 40,000 agents, there's 30, you know, whatever the number is, there's a lot of agents, okay? A lot of them came into the industry because they saw it was really fun and exciting and I saw a million dollar listing and once I enter, all of my friends are gonna work with me, I know all these wealthy people, I'm gonna be getting Soho lofts worth five to six million dollars and I'm gonna be making hundreds of thousands of dollars, I'm gonna have every single weekend off and then they enter the industry and they notice holy cow this is actually harder than I thought and one of the biggest things that I can say with that is that word is finally getting out okay the industry is not as easy as what people see on TV number one is the deals that they see on TV they make it way more dramatic they shorten it to obviously what is it a 45 minute show or an hour show whatever it is I don't know I don't, I don't really watch it but also the actual amount of brokers who are in the in the industry within the last two years or three years or even longer, will start leaving the industry because they say, the benefits aren't there, the amount of transactions aren't there, my commission isn't there, I still have to support my family, I still have to support my lifestyle, or something else is going on in their life where they say, I need something consistent. I can't, I can't go to the office and have this variable flow of deals. That then, that then goes into the best agents will start getting more and more and more business. Obviously Pareto's principle, which is 20% of the agents have 80% of the business. I think it's actually higher. I think that it's about 90% of the business goes to the top 10% or even 95 to 5%. I have no statistics around it, but within the industry, you understand that the, if you have a good system and you have a good team behind you, you're gonna be getting a massive amount of business. And the reason I'm also saying this is because those buyers and those sellers who were using their aunt Kathy, who had their real estate license for 25 years and they've only done four deals, they were using that person because they were friends with them. Or that seller who used their best friend's nephew because, you know, it doesn't really matter who you use. But this is the thing is that those people who actually use, un, not, I, I shouldn't say unprofessional, but I should say the, not the best agents or the ones that they were referred to they're gonna be, those agents are not only gonna be leaving the industry, but they're also, those buyers and sellers are gonna say, this is the biggest asset I'm buying, this is the biggest asset I'm selling. I need a professional, so they go to the best. Moving on, so in other words, the best agents will increase their business, maybe increase their team. Moving on to the luxury market will stall and they will contemplate renting out their units in 2020. This is obviously something that you'll see publicly, through the real deal and curbed in Wall Street Journal and New York Times, but they will never admit it. These big developments that are behind me that are on 57th Street, 59th Street, right around there, you just you see them. They're they're towering, no pun intended, a lot of them, you know, are their name is Tower. They have just massive amounts of units worth five, 10, 15, 20 million dollars. There's they got absorbed. 2014, 2015 by 157, 432 Park, and then you have a slew of more expensive buildings that are, they still have units. So I was here in 2009 in the real estate market. A lot of these developments, and I'll tell you two stories behind it, a lot of these developments, they said, we still have to pay the bank back. We still have our monthly costs of construction, of loans, of financing, of taxes. They still have that. So they either go to their reserves and they start paying it down from there, or they say, listen, we gotta rent these units out. It's not ideal, and there's a lot of buildings in the financial district, that's exactly what happened. One of them is uh, 75 Wall Street. They started renting out units down there in 2009. I know a developer, he was loyal to someone that was at Town Residential, and in Town Residential collapsed, hence why I say uh, in number two that the offices of the largest brokerages will close. Town Residential, he then moved over to, I think he started his own brokerage, but that developer stayed loyal to that person. I tried to get the business really hard. I was giving them uh, tons of feedback and I, I know they used a lot of it because instead of selling, I said, we, I can't garner you, this, garner you this price per square foot. And the thing was that they, they discovered what, or they told the bank the price per square foot should be this amount. That was two years ago when it was a bull market. When you have a market that's a little bit sluggish or where you still have a massive amount of overhead per month, guess what they did? They put it on for rent. And that's a small development. That's only 10 units, probably a sellout of, I wanna say $30 million. Imagine these hundreds of millions of dollars or $1 billion sellout. That's a lot. It's a lot of money that they need to, 
to send back in, in construction costs and overhead and taxes and land, land construction. And it, it, it's, you know, moving on. Last point, number six, is that consumers will opt for brokers over data and website. Before, there was a lot of direct deals. So a direct deal is obviously a buyer that's working with no agent. So they would call me up and they would say, hey, listen, looking to see this property. I show them the property, they put an offer and they felt comfortable with that because they, they, they saw maybe 15, 20 homes and they said, you know what? I don't want to lose another home. Maybe a lot of people lost a lot of homes before they actually bought their home in the past. So in other words, you put an offer, then another offer comes in, they lose a home. They put an offer somewhere else, they lose the home. So they, they had this consistent thinking of, if I want this home, I need to go in, I need to aggressively give a great offer and move forward. And they were fine without working with a, an agent because it was an emotional marketplace. An emotional marketplace says, I really like this home. I'm fine overpaying or paying a little bit more than I think, say another unit closed for, let's do it. Now, people need that objective reasoning. They need someone to actually interpret all this data that's coming their way and working with professionals. Literally, even on a, a $400,000 property that we have on the Upper West Side, all the way down to a $2 million property that we have in, in the West Village, and even more expensive in uh, Greenwich Village that's coming available, is that they're all working with brokers. They're all working with brokers because they understand that they want to make the best choice. And this is all, and, and this is funny, going back to the, to the other point, which is uh, number four, the best agents will increase their business, is that people are working with professionals. You know, every broker says, oh, I've been working with them before, or they, you know, I, I've helped them buy and sell for years. It's not, I'm just meeting them for the first time. So consumers will opt for brokers over data and websites. And most importantly for the brokers is that we have to give them an experience that has them coming back for more, has them referring us, having them writing incredible reviews. So here are the six things. The spring will be better than the fall of next year. 2019 spring will be better than the fall. Offices of the largest brokerages will silently close. No one's gonna talk about it. Shh. It's all about ego to them. Massive numbers, number three, massive numbers of brokers will leave the industry because they can't support themselves and all the business, as I say, number four, will go to the top agents and more business will go to the top agents. So continuing on with number three is massive numbers of brokers will leave the industry and numbers entering the marketplace for as brokers will also decrease. New York Real Estate Institute here in New York in tons of them were opened because there was just this massive influx of brokers that I saw the show, it's gonna be easy, I just get my license, beautiful. Number four, the best agents will increase their business and the reason being is that they people wanna be working with a professional and they only wanna be working with the best. So that's number four. Number five is the luxury market will stall and they'll start contemplating renting out their units in by 2020. In other words, if they don't have contracts signed, if they don't have closings by 2019, they're gonna start contemplating, we need to pay back the banks, we have a lot of overhead, we have a lot of construction costs, we have a lot of taxes that we need to pay back, we have land acquisition costs. And then number six is that consumers will opt for brokers over data and websites, and the reason being is that they want an objective point of view, someone that's gonna be able to interpret the data and make a wise, sound decision on the price that they should list it at, or the price that, that they should sell it at. Those are my bold predictions. I will probably revisit them <laughs> and see, see how correct I am in that. If you guys have any questions, I, 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 I don't know. I just think I'm just really spot on with that. I could be wrong. Uh, maybe no large brokerage just closes offices, but having a massive company, what, 800 units, or I'm sorry, 800 agents, 750 agents at town residential, and they just shuttered doors overnight without any warning. You know, some people I, I knew at the company, they said, we saw the signs and, and we, we left. We saw the sign, it opened. So they opened up their eyes and they left. But if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below. Obviously it's holiday season. So happy Hanukkah to those celebrating. Merry Christmas, obviously upcoming. Happy New Year. If you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below or shoot me an email, charles at botenston.com. Uh, we're expecting an incredible 2019. We've honed our systems. We've honed how we list properties. How do we price properties? We've said yes to only good price properties and not to other properties. So again, have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon.